you guys. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about everything pregnancy and specifically postpartum as well. Things that I wish I had done differently the first time or if we end up having more kids then these are things that I would like to do differently for baby number two. Now, I know that I haven't filmed in quite some time. I actually wanted to do a little life update to update you guys on something specific that has been going on that that was the reason why I haven't been filming. I think it's been about a month since I filmed and that is going to be in a whole other video so stay tuned for that if you're interested in exactly what happened but i got this idea from kristen johns if you guys watch her if you don't check her out her channel is awesome and she posted a video like this and it reminded me that i actually had this exact video on my list of videos to film so i was like why not this is the perfect time to dive right in please don't mind my background where i usually film i am having trouble with that area because my ring light broke so i'm in the process of trying to get a new one so i had to try to work with the lighting that we naturally have in the room and thankfully today is actually a really sunny day there's like barely any clouds the sky is blue, so I figured I'm going to take advantage and film directly in front of the window and try to get as much best light as possible. Don't mind the background. It is a little messy because we do co-sleep with our son and we do have floor beds. So let's just get right into number one, which is if I could do anything differently it would definitely be to possibly change from an OB to a midwife now I'm not saying anything bad about OBs I'm sure there are some great ones out there if you loved your OB or if you currently love your OB then this is not me saying that you have to leave them and go find a midwife that is not what I'm saying However, there are many, many women that I have heard from who have not had good experiences with their OBs. And for me personally, mine wasn't necessarily bad. She was a very nice person, but I just feel like they just stick to the books. They stick to what they know, what they are familiar with and what they are comfortable with. And anything outside of that, they kind of shun away. So if you want specifics, for example, for me, for my labor and birth, I was really interested in having something with water, which I explained in my birth story video, whether that was in a birthing pool or to be in the shower. And my OB was not necessarily comfortable with that or familiar with it. I know that if you are looking for specific things, then definitely a midwife may be a better choice. And I just didn't know anything about pregnancy and pregnancy journey. So I just figured that an OB was the normal way to go and that that was the path that everybody took. So I just went with it. But later on in my pregnancy is when I found out about midwives and how they do different things and how they have different practices and offer different services. So that is something that I would definitely look into. Something else that I would do differently is to prepare more when it comes to postpartum. So postpartum is something that I feel like not a lot of people talk about. They kind of just expect mothers to just handle it themselves and kind of go through it quietly. And I just feel like there needs to be a lot more, there needs to be a lot more conversation around postpartum and how to properly support mothers especially those who are having a difficult time with it so again with an ob what happens is you give birth and then typically you see your ob again only at six weeks 
So at the six week mark, you go in for your checkup appointment to see how you are healing and how everything is going. And then that's pretty much it. That's really the only time that you get to speak to them again, a midwife, or even if you have like a doula or a traditional birth attendant, then they can typically be much more involved with your postpartum journey. I had a very difficult postpartum and without going into too much detail, I did have a tear but i had a it was a first degree tear so it wasn't bad at all it was if you're going to have one then that is the best one to have but it was the placement of where it was that made things extremely difficult for me and that it made my healing prolong and just be that much more difficult so for me personally I had a very difficult time sitting down and the only time that I felt comfortable was when I was laying down and I just found that I didn't have much time to lay down because I was just constantly getting up with the baby getting my pump ready, washing pump parts, I was getting bottles ready, getting milk ready and all of that and so much more. So I just felt like I barely had any time to lay down and laying down was the only time that I felt comfortable. So I was mostly on my feet 24 seven, which is what you don't want to do. You want to rest as much as possible because the more that you rest, the faster and better your body heals. What ended up happening with me that also made my postpartum more difficult was that because I couldn't sit and I tried so many different surfaces. I tried sitting on fluffy, comfortable pillows. I tried sitting on neck pillows, which kind of were like a donut hole. And I thought that would have been better, but none of that worked. So what ended up happening was I had severe soreness and severe pain in my feet, like to the bones and in my legs. But that just made walking and just everyday daily activities so much more difficult. And I felt that pain for about a good, I want to say like at least three weeks. Definitely what I would do differently is do your research on postpartum. Ask your healthcare provider, whether it be an OB or a midwife, ask them about those possibilities and what things that they suggest to make it easier on you. So that is something that I would definitely do. Something that I wish I had done sooner was, now this is completely personal preference, you don't have to do this, but I felt more comfortable with it, which was, I ended up switching from plastic bottles to glass bottles and I specifically used bibs which I spoke about in my newborn favorites video I think that was a couple months back. For me I exclusively pumped for Gabriel so for the first three months we for the first two or three months we used the classic event bottles we tried dr brown's and i know that these companies also do have glass bottles but i used just their regular plastic bottles and then i did do the switch over to glass i personally believe that they are much better for your baby they are healthier for your baby if that is a path that you are interested in taking that health route then definitely take a look into glass bottles. Um, so in my opinion, they are safer, they are more durable, they last longer because I noticed that all plastic bottles, the more milk you put in them, the more use they get, and the more times you wash them and boil them, they end up creating this weird grayish film on them that is really really difficult to remove you just kind of got to throw them away and get a new bottle so that is something that you don't have to worry about with a glass bottle and also i did notice that glass bottles heat up so much quicker so i can get a glass bottle heated up in maybe a minute or less and 
plastic bottles were sometimes taking like five, 10 minutes to heat up. The next thing is co-sleeping and cribs. When I was pregnant, I thought that all babies just slept in cribs. Think of a crib as a baby's bed. So I definitely thought that was a necessity from the time that they were born. Now I had always heard about bassinets and bedside bassinets. I just didn't find the point in them because especially because Gabriel wasn't going to be in his own room. He didn't have his own nursery because of the space in the house. So he was sleeping in our room and I figured, okay, we're gonna have the crib in our room. There's really no point in having a crib and a bassinet next to the bed. It's pretty much plays the same role. We just had him in his crib straight from day one. And personally, I don't think that was the greatest idea. And that is something that I definitely would change for baby number two. When you have a newborn, it is really common to just be paranoid about them sleeping and just you have this habit as a mom of wanting to always check up on them to see if they're breathing, to see if they're okay. That first week, especially of bringing him home, I pretty much did not sleep. I was so paranoid. I was constantly checking up on him. His crib was literally like 10 feet away from our bed, but I was constantly every 20 minutes getting up and going to check on him. And I tried so many different things. I slept on our nursery chair and put a bunch of pillows around and I just held him in the middle of the pillows to try to create like a barrier. I just felt like he was safest in my arms and that is pretty much how I slept for a little bit. And then when I finally tried some nights in his crib, like I said, I was constantly checking up on him and I tried putting a nightlight so I could get up and see him better instead of actually physically walking to his crib. But Michael could not sleep with a nightlight. I was trying to find different ways to work with him and to compromise, but he just could not sleep with a nightlight. He has to sleep in complete darkness. So with the room being dark, if I wanted to check on Gabriel, then I would have to open the flashlight of my phone and kind of like flash it in the room and see if I could see him, but then that didn't work. So I had to get up and it was just so much work. It just, it wasn't working out for either of us. We just ended up co-sleeping and that right now is what is working the best for us. I just, I wouldn't worry so much about getting them trained in their crib right away, especially with this new thing of sleep training. I know that there are so many different opinions about it, but you just do what works best for your family. If sleep training and baby sleeping in their crib works for you, then good on you, mama. Just keep on doing what is happy and healthy for you and for baby. But for us, as you guys can see in the background, we do co-sleep and that has been a lifesaver in so many ways. Yes, it has its struggles. When he was born, he had a really difficult time latching and it wasn't because of a tongue tie or a lip tie because the doctors checked for that and they said that he was good. So I'm not really sure. I personally think that he just had a very small mouth because he was born pretty tiny. He was born six pounds and 10 ounces, which I mean, for a boy is a little on the smaller side. Even to this day, I feel like looking at him, Gabriel just, he does have kind of a small mouth. So that's what I always thought that he just had a hard time latching because of that. So I tried my best to make it work, but I just ended up exclusively pumping for him because that is just what was more easier and convenient. I just got used to pumping after doing my research about it and it just seemed so easy. You just connect yourself to a pump 
and you pump, you sit there until you're empty and then you got milk. That process just brought ease to my mind and just made feeding him a hundred times easier. So I just ended up sticking with pumping. Now, the thing that I would change, however, is I, I was dead set on breastfeeding him actually nursing before he was born. So before he was born, all the research I pretty much did on pumping was I just bought a random pump. And I didn't really do much research on how to pump, how long to pump, all of the specific techniques and ins and outs about pumping. So I did all of that when I was in the moment of going through it, which kind of made it stressful and I made a few mistakes here and there. Had I researched before, then I probably would not have made those mistakes and I probably would have had a little easier time. So I would suggest just do your research on pumping just in case you have to. If you already know that you want to do that, definitely do your research before a baby is born because you want to have all of that information ready. You want to be ready to go and know exactly what to do when the time comes. This next point is definitely something that I would like to change next time, which is to not be afraid to go out more unless your baby is born in the middle of winter and you know it's really cold outside and it's snowing then you necessarily don't want to go out in that type of weather but gabriel was born in the beginning of spring so as the weeks passed by the weather was getting warmer and better we really had no excuse to not go out i mean we did go out places we took him to the first time to the beach we went to the zoo we took him we went out for a family for like ice cream and desserts and all of that but there is so much more that i feel like we could have done just like even simple walks or strolls around the block just taking him to the park and sitting with him just things like that i feel like i definitely would change next time because the thing is, with a baby, I just got so used to taking care of him at home and it was just easier at home instead of worrying about having to get his stuff ready, get his diaper bag ready, get my bag ready with all of my pump parts. And then depending on where we went, how far it was and how long we were going to be out of the house, I would have to worry about having like a cooler for his milk so that it stayed fresh and cold and then worrying about washing my pump parts and keeping them sanitized and all of that. So maybe if you are nursing or formula feeding, then it would be a little bit easier to go out. But for those moms who exclusively pump, I feel like you can relate to what I'm saying. If I had to do it all over again, I would definitely try to just be more motivated to go out more instead of just staying in the house. This next point is kind of similar to what I was saying about pumping and nursing, which was something that I would do differently is try harder to actually nurse. Like I said, I tried for maybe the first couple of weeks, but he just wasn't latching. And ultimately what it was doing was it was actually making it harder to pump when he wasn't getting a proper latch it was creating a lot of pain for me and then having to pump so that i could feed him was making pumping extremely painful like unbearably painful it shouldn't be painful it actually should be very comfortable so when it is painful you know that something is going wrong or you're doing something that's not right a point I had to choose if it's going to be this painful, I'm either going to have to formula feed and stop everything or just stop trying to nurse and then just stick to pumping. So because I really wanted to give him my breast milk, I just decided to stick to pumping. I know that there are different things that you can use to help baby latch. So for example, there is something called nipple shields that helps them to latch better. So the last thing that I would do differently is 
in those early days, early weeks is to not be afraid to ask for more help. I think that after you give birth, you have this sort of adrenaline running through your body or this oxytocin and it kind of just, it gives you this false sense of you feeling like you have so much energy and even when you are running on pretty much no sleep it almost gives you this feeling of like you want to be a super mom and you just feel like you can do everything yourself in those early days and weeks there are moments that i remember looking back that i was like hmm okay yeah i definitely could have asked people for help even if it was just like watching him for five minutes while I go shower or brush my teeth or something. And I don't know, I just felt like I could do everything myself and I didn't have to necessarily keep asking for help. Do not be afraid, do not be embarrassed to ask people for help. That is pretty much everything that I wanted to let you guys know of things I regret things I would do differently if I could do it again. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys resonate with the points that I mentioned. Let me know if you went through some, some similar things that you would change. And if you have any tips for me, then definitely let me know in the comments and for other moms who may be potentially watching this. Please guys, if you liked it, like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you are notified every single time I post. And I promise I'm going to be trying my best to upload much more often than I have been. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!